All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of Keto Rocks Radio with your host, Jim Hobbs. And to my left is Brian Damage Forsyth of Kicks. And we're coming at you tonight, uh, a little bit before Kicks actually hits the stage. So, Brian, you guys excited about playing tonight in your uh, home state? Yeah, it's, it's an odd one. We've not done one of these drive in things before, but uh, we'll see what, how it goes. <laughs> Awesome. Now it's going to be, it's outside. So the temperatures will have an impact on you guys or, or no. It depends how, how cold it is. <laughs> well, if playing in the cold is never any fun, but uh, like in the old days, they used to have, uh, you know, the, the real lights would have heat, but now, nowadays the lights are all uh, LED. Yeah. So there's no, there's no heat from them, but they're, they're good. They're supposedly going to have a, uh, you know, heat things on the stage i guess like a, an outdoor restaurant <laughs> so there'll be little pockets of heat that, that'll wreak havoc, havoc on the guitar tuning <laughs> T table for two right over here sitting there with your little propane heater and yeah but these these uh sparsely uh these shows that are just spread out all like here and there it's it's really rough like let me turn that thing off so my phone doesn't keep making noise. It, it's rough to um, to have all this time between shows and then just do one show and then not have another show. It, it's like, because you got to ramp up to it and get prepared for it. And, and when we're on a roll, you know, doing it every week, it's it's like way easy. It's like a routine. But but the way it's, it is now, it's it's, uh, it's it's more of a challenge. Well, so, I'm sure it's like... Uh like going to your high school locker with a your combination. If you do it every day, it's easy. It's second nature to you. But if you, you only go to have to use your locker once every six months, you're like, what's the combination again? What am I supposed <laughs> right. to do? Exactly. Or it's like anything like that. You, you get out of the routine and you just forget what you're supposed to do. Like I, I can't even remember how to pack a suitcase anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, half the time when we were playing full time, I just leave it half packed. You know, I pull stuff out, do laundry, and throw it back in there. <laughs> yeah, that's. I can remember I was uh, traveling back and forth from uh, from the East Coast out to San Diego every other week, and I remember, you know, with the time difference, as soon as I get back home, I just, I had all I had time to to do was to get adjusted for the the day, do my laundry, and pack it back up in the suitcase, and get on the plane on Monday morning and fly back to San Diego. Yeah. So. But, uh, well, it should be a fun show. I know a lot of people have been talking about it, so it should be fun. It'll be interesting how one of these drive-in shows are as far as the crowd interaction goes. It'll be interesting to see how that, how that yeah. pans out for you all. I mean, I, I've talked to other people that have done these, and, uh, um, you know, sometimes they'll have it to where people just, they'll bring folding chairs and stuff, and they'll just sit outside of their car, around their cars, so they're still out in the open, but it depends. If it's cold, people might be in their cars. <laughs> and, you know, so it's kind of like the, uh, it was one of the guys, who was it? They're opening for Great White, and it was one of those drive-in things, but it was one of the ones where the people are on the outside of their car. Oh, it was that guy Phil from uh, the Rock and Roll Residency. He was telling me, he, 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 at one point he goes, everybody honk your horns. And he realized nobody was in their cars. So they couldn't honk their horns. So, and, and then you see other ones like, uh, or like I've, I listened to Bill Burr, his podcast, and he, he's done a few comedy ones like that. And they actually do sit in their cars and honk. It's like their, their responses with the horn. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. And I, I mean, Steve interacts. It'll be interesting to see how he interacts when you're looking at a bunch of cars uh and like you said depending on the weather if it's cold people are going to be in their cars and if it's you know nice people will be outside yeah yeah and and you know it, it, it'll affect steve more than anyone because he's the one that has to interact with with the people he's the one that interacts with the crowd like for me it doesn't matter where i am it's like i'm in a little <laughs> bubble playing my guitar i could be in somebody's bedroom <laughs> <laughs> well it should be a a, a fun Fun evening. I know Peggy and I are looking forward to it. I know a bunch of other people are too. So, what uh, what food projects have you been working working on? What are you, what are you looking to to cook uh, this week, or what have you cooked this week? Let's go there. 
Well, I did that one video last week, you know, finally did a new video. Um, but I've sort of been, it's weird. I, I've been having, I've got a lot of stuff in my freezer, but I'll eat and then I'll forget to think about what I'm going to have the next day. And then like later in the evening, it's like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta think of, I gotta pull something out of the freezer. And, uh, you know, in the past when I was, that's another thing where I got out of the routine of doing those videos, I would sort of mentally kind of think of a picture in my mind of what to put together for a, you know, nice meal the next day. But now it's almost like I almost go to grab whatever's going to thaw the quickest, you know, <laughs> and, and just put, throw it up into the top of the refrigerator from the freezer and, and just go with whatever that is. You know, the next day I get to it and it, it you know, it'd be a ribeye or something. And then I'll go, well, what do I eat with it? I guess I'll just have some eggs and some bacon. You know, I don't really, I haven't been thinking of anything like creative. I haven't right. been creative with it lately. But I do, well, I just showed you, I, I bought a pack of those uh, lamb loin chops today from Costco. Um, and they're not frozen yet. So I don't know if I'm up to eating those tomorrow because I just ate, uh, I just finished off those uh, short ribs tonight. <laughs> So I might want to go with something a little lighter. Maybe I'll go with fish. Oh, I have a pack of um, big pack of chicken hearts that's defrosting. Or I think it's defrosted. So that, maybe I'll, maybe I'll make some chicken hearts tomorrow. Now, what do you you just do you smoke those or just fry them up in the in the, in the skillet with butter? Well, in the past, I I fry them in the like a cast iron skillet with you know, roll them in pork panko, kind of. Right. And I, and cook them with bacon, but smoking them might be a, a, an option. I have to think about that too. I'll have to look that up to see if there's any cool ways to smoke them or something. Now I did something very different. Uh, on Sunday I did, and I don't know if I've talked about this before, but I decided to do bacon wrap carrots, organic carrots. And so let me tell you how I did this this time. So I, I have some keto friendly maple syrup. It's got one net carb. Um, and so I just for people, if you guys want to try this, it's, it's really, really good. So I set the, the oven at 350. I rolled out uh, the bacon and I would brush on uh, maple syrup. And then I sprinkled that with sea salt. And then I would put the carrot, wrap the carrot, put a toothpick through it. And I just put a bunch of those on a, on a, on a tray, stuck them in the oven at 350 for 10 minutes. Then I pulled them back out, glazed them again with the brush, put more sea salt on top, put them in for another, uh, was it 15 minutes this time? Yeah, 15 minutes. And then I pulled them out, brushed them again, and put them in the broiler for five minutes. And let me just tell you, they were delicious, <laughs> delicious. And so I had that along with, uh, I had bacon sausage. I think I posted a picture of it, actually. I think I posted a picture of it on uh, Sunday or Monday. Yeah, I think I saw that. Because that, when you mentioned the carrots and the bacon, it, it rang a bell. <laughs> yeah, so and it was, Peggy loved it. And so it was really, really, really good. I'll, I'll, I'll double check the recipe. I'll, I'll post it just to make sure. Um, I'll put it in the show notes just to make sure um, if someone wants to try it. It's a great, great recipe. So, yeah. So, yeah. It's at my phone this time. I need to cut mine off now. Sorry about that, guys. But oh, that was my email. Let oh, me, let me close that. So, but we are we are approaching November, and November has Thanksgiving. <laughs> We just, we just got past Halloween, and I know for a lot of you, the, the trick-or-treaters, and, and, and do you trick-or-treat anymore, Brian, just to ask a question? <laughs> <laughs> or do you have trick-or-treaters that come to your house? Uh, not this year, luckily, but, um, you know, it's funny. I, I, I always try, you know, in the past, I've done that, but uh, my last girlfriend, Janice, out in California, we weren't <laughs> really into that, so... We'd always, luckily our house was kind of off the beaten path, so people rarely even came up our street. The, the, there was a main street down at the bottom of the hill where, I mean, people come all over, from all over to, to go along there because that's where the, 
like everybody went overboard with their decorations but we'd always turn all our lights off so nobody would come to our house and that's kind of what I did here although I don't think anybody was out this year but last year I forgot and left my porch light on and I think I was sitting here in my kitchen and I hear the doorbell and I'm like huh, who could that be I thought maybe it was my neighbor and I opened the door and it was a couple of kids standing there and I'm like oh I have True. nothing because I don't have anything here. What you give them, a pork chop? A, here's a ribeye, or, or... <laughs> well, after they left, I thought, oh man, I had some, I had a couple old keto bars in there that I never ate. I could have thrown them in there. <laughs> so what you tell me? Hey, I don't have anything for you. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Oh. Yeah, I apologize. I was like, I'm, I'm like completely unprepared. I wasn't thinking, <laughs> and they just kind of slinked off into the night. <laughs> oh poor kids yeah i felt bad <laughs> but we are we are at that time of season we just got past halloween and now we got thanksgiving facing us and then we got christmas and so this is a time together where people start to gather together have meals and and food and the question that we all ask ourselves when we're trying to do a keto carnivore lifestyle and people don't really understand that um uh, they're going to go, oh, come on, you can have, it's, it's the holidays. And I, I see it all the time. And I look, I used to use that as an excuse. Oh, it's the holidays. I'll get back on track. But that, that taking the bait for just that one moment causes you to really fall way back. And that craving starts to come on to you. And it takes a while, just like we were talking earlier, Brian, about the, uh, the uh, daylight savings time, that one hour that we, we just got through losing or gaining, I guess, how much it messes with you. Um, mm -hmm. It takes about a month to, to recover. It's almost the same thing when you have sugar, when you start taking sugar or, or eating something that you haven't had in a while, it takes you a while to get, get over that, that desire to, that desire to that, to that drug of sugar. Yeah. Oh, even, um, well, that's like for me, even eating um, stuff that's sweet, that doesn't have sugar in it will trigger that same reaction. Like when I made that cheesecake, um, even after it was gone, I would, I would have my meal and then I'd want something like that again, like, at, you know, with that little dessert reward, my, my body gets into that, that mode. If I, if I eat that stuff and, and if I refrain from eating it long enough, it, it goes away and I don't think like that anymore, but yeah, any, t any little thing for me will trigger that. <laughs> It'll start that back up. No, that's, that's a habit that I get into as well. And, and even if it's a healthy snack, I mean, or, or it's a keto, keto friendly snack, um, yeah. it, it, it happened. I mean, for me, it's the, you know, I, I make no secret about it. it's the dark chocolate. I love to stop in the refrigerator and dump in a few dark chocolate chips um, and, and having those in the evening after, after having a meal. But, you know, but people who are gathering together with the families and stuff, there's a plenty of options for you. I mean, there's, there's, there's definitely keto friendly uh, recipes out there. I know Brian's done the, the ice cream and the cheesecake. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm excited tomorrow. I was just telling Brian earlier, um, I finally got my ice cream attachment for the KitchenAid, which, wow. Uh, I didn't know I was going to have to save that much money to buy an attachment that doesn't look like it'd be that expensive, but it's almost as expensive as the KitchenAid mixer itself. Um, yeah they're a little pricey but, but I, I think i told you that i i sent you the written out recipe once you start that like you put the bowl on there and you start that thing to rotate like it, you got to have that thing going before you even think about pouring anything in there because i made that mistake i i lifted the the kitchen aid thing up you know at the angle so i could right. pour the stuff in <laughs> And then you plop it back down and it's frozen and it won't, it won't turn after that. <laughs> yeah, well, like I got to see it freezes that, almost immediately. Yeah. That attachment goes that, I mean, I see the bowl that attachment fits snugly into that bowl. I mean, that little ball thing at the bottom. And, and I mean, it's scientifically engineered to be perfect to, to be able to, to make that ice cream and go around inside that frozen tub. Yeah. And the way that the thing is attached at the top, it's just those little teeth kind of things. So you you actually that's the way I know when it's done it it'll be turning, you know you're going at that slow pace and it'll after like 20 minutes or so it starts to get thicker and thicker, and then you can hear it like slip like a 
a little notch. It'll like be going around and it'll go and then it'll go for a little while and then it'll go it'll like slip again. That's when you know it's starting to get a little thick and it's it's pretty much done at that point. And then and then what do you do at that point? You take that that whole uh, tub and put that in your fridge or freezer or what no, do you do with it? You just lift the thing up and, and you pull that little paddle thing out and it's just caked with <laughs> like soft serve and you just sort of knock it down back in the bowl and then you take it out of that bowl and put it in whatever you want to store it in. Okay, and so you don't store it in that, 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 that whatever that thing that has the liquid in it to keep it really cold or whatever. No, well I don't. I don't know if you can. I don't know if it would just freeze in there though. But that's the one thing I haven't figured out yet is what to store it in because so far I, I can't get it to not just freeze up on me like a rock. Um, one time I made it where it stayed a little softer, but this time I don't know why I didn't. Maybe I used too much um, like with the coffee, too much water in the coffee mixture or something, but something made it so it turned to ice or maybe it's just the wrong container that I'm storing it in. You know, because like regular ice cream is in like a cardboard thing, and I think that's more like an insulated. So, uh, yeah, I got to figure that. That's the next thing I got to figure out. Got to figure out how to store it so it doesn't become a, a, a block of ice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 I was, I actually was, I, now I could be totally wrong, but in looking at that attachment, I was wondering if they have a cover for it. Like it just, you could just pop on a, a, a cap or a top and, and put it in the, uh, in the refrigerator since the insides of that whatever it's insulated with would probably still be frozen i don't know but yeah but i wonder if it would just keep freezing until it was a rock inside that thing that's true <laughs> that, that, that's that's true but i'm i'm looking forward i i'm going to be making that tomorrow and brian you informed me i was all excited about tomorrow but it, it's more of a two-day process so i probably won't really have it until either late thursday night or or friday so yeah because it needs to sit in the fr in the refrigerator and, and sort of you know the the custard base and the coffee base as well, well but it, I, it can work if you'd start it early and then finish it later in the day well i'll i'll get it up early it just will mess with my routine but i'll i'll i will see um you know brian and i was talking about something earlier earlier and i don't know how you guys are impacted who are who are listening and following the show but how does this time change mess with you because it uh, brian and i were talking discussing it earlier for me it takes about a month for me to get adjusted and i i do not know why it's just i mean i should be happy i'm gaining an hour um but it it really does mess with my sleep habits and really causes me to get out of my rhythm and it takes a while for me to recover from it yeah, and like I was saying earlier, it's like um, it messes with me more than, you know, like the, the uh, time change traveling across country that I used to deal with when I lived in California. But in those situations, um, when I was living in California, I was getting up at like my, my normal waking time was 7 a.m. So I, when I'd fly back east and stay on the east coast, I would just get up at 10 so it's it was the same the same you know trying to keep the hours the same so then when i flew back it was this you know i went back to the 7 a.m yeah how do you how how did you because when you did your fly out when you guys do your fly or you do your fly out shows and you're leaving out on the west coast coming to the east coast and you're going right back within i would take within two days 48 hours 72 hours yeah do you just kind of just stay on your california west coast time when yeah. you were doing that yeah, so I I wake up at ten a.m. every morning just to make it. Yeah, so it's the same as waking up at seven on the West Coast. But so, so that that oh it so it baffles me that, that that this this one hour can mess with me so much more. <laughs> yeah, but I guess because I'm not going anywhere, and I, it's like, you know, if I want to stay up to watch the same show on TV at night that I normally watch, it's a whole. It's like. You got to stay up an hour later to see it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even though the clock says it's not an hour later, <laughs> it really is. <laughs> now, but, and, and you were discussing this too, about how it impacts our pets, like our cats, our dogs. Like they don't, 
see the time they're like wait a minute it's time for me to eat they're, they their body gets into that same rhythm as well and, yeah yeah if you, you change time on a cat they, they don't appreciate that <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so we were discussing that so i know you were with smoking your cat you just keep smoking on the same schedule but yeah. let me let me ask you do you keep yourself on the same schedule as far as your eating time, roughly your eating window um not consciously but it's been working out like that like today i was done completely done at 4 30 there was some a couple of days i was it was like 3 30 i was done yeah because I, it feels like it's later like my body is still acting like you know it's on normal time and uh so i find myself like i'll be eating and i'll realize oh it's only 3 30 i thought it was later <laughs> you know and, and yeah, so it's been working out like that. You know, I think that's kind of what happened, at least that happened to me this year, because I just got up and I even forgot to set the clocks. I didn't set the clocks ahead. Usually when I go to bed, I'll set all the clocks. So when I wake up, I'm at the real time. But I didn't do that this year. And uh, so I just got up and started going to the kitchen and turned, went to the garage, turned on the sauna. And then I came back out and then I looked at my phone. Of course, the phone's got the real time on it. I'm like, mm -hmm. wait a minute. Wow. Oh, that's right. It's and then I like look at the clock on this on the on the microwave, and I go, "Wait a minute, yeah, we just I forgot we we got to turn the clocks back." And then, for whatever reason, I I then go I go back to sleep or try to go back to sleep and or and then try to take a nap in the afternoon. I just cannot get acclimated to that one hour that one hour change, and it does mess with me in all areas of my life. Um, yeah, it, it yeah, it's it's weird how it works like that. Like I, I was saying, even going to bed an hour earlier to compensate, it throws me off because I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like, it feels like I've been sleeping all night and it's still like four in the morning. And I'm like, you know, I don't know why it would affect that part of my sleep, but somehow it just throws everything off. I, maybe it's just psychological. <laughs> I, I, I wish, I mean, I, this is just my wish. I wish we just would pick one of the... The, the 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 time zones and just stick with it like whether it's this one here and just say okay this is what it's going to be forever mm -hmm. um i peggy and i was we had we had a meeting tonight and a, with a client and the client was telling us that he said hawaii stays on standard time they never changed their their they never changed their time um, yeah, this isn't like uh, Arizona or one of those. Why? Why? Yeah, he was saying Wyoming. Why? I think he, this guy was telling me Wyoming. I, he said Wyoming. It could be Arizona, but it was that. And Hawaii stays the same. They don't. They don't go back. And so I was wondering how that impacts for the reason you were saying. Like, if people, you know, watch television, watch sporting events, watch whatever, how does that impact their when they have a neighboring state? It just, I don't, I don't know how all that works. It sounds crazy. Yeah, I know. It's confusing. <laughs> I get a head, I get a headache. I'm literally getting a headache just thinking about it. Like, okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. Like this, this time, time now that it, that they, it just switched to, I guess this is the natural time. This is the way it's supposed to be. So they, like when it gets to, this is what do they call this this isn't day the the old one was daylight savings that we so just this is stand is this so what are we this is uh standard time the standard yeah. time so we're at standard time now right yeah like they should just leave it at standard all all year i don't know who's in charge of that but <laughs> yeah i mean it's like the i remember the i remember the indians uh, I remember watching this Native American meme where the uh, they said only the white man would uh, believe they can they can uh, cut cut the the one foot off the bottom of the blanket and sew it to the top and and think they got a longer blanket or something. And that's, I saw that. <laughs> that's a great analogy. It is a great analogy. It's like in the reality of it is you still got the same blanket. I mean you're not. So I mean I think back the the origins of it was for the fact that people could get up and who farmed and we farmed could have as much daylight to, to farm that they right. could, could have. And that makes a lot of sense. But the reality of it is, I mean, as, as many farmers as we do have in the United States, the majority of people are not farmers. So, uh, you know, I think we should just stick with this standard time. I don't know how we could get that to, how we could change that or what, what authority makes that decision that I don't know if it's a state by state or if it's a, a federal 
decision. I had, that's a that's a great question. Somebody look that up. <laughs> I'll have to look it up. Well, I know a lot of people complain about it. So <laughs> anyway, uh, so what other what other what other projects you got going on? So you 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 got the lamb chops. Any, anything else that you want to stretch yourself with? I know you stretch yourself with the cheesecake, but anything else that uh, you're uh, interested? Well, well, I was talking to you before we started the show about my uh, my short ribs I made. Man, they were good though. They were um, from Tennessee Grass Fed, that the place where I order the place up in Clarksville, and um, they're uh, wagyu wagyu wagyu. However you say that, um, yeah. short ribs. So they were big and they they were marbled, and ah, uh, they were so juicy. I mean. I couldn't believe how how good these things were. But so you see, so tell us how you. So how how did you prepare them? How do you cook them? So what seasoning and what do you do? Well, these are wrapped in. Oh, actually, they came in sets of two, but they weren't attached. They were separate, so they're all separate. And I just I grabbed three packs of two, so I had six six short ribs, and they're you know all all of them they were. In fact, it's funny, you pull them out of the pack before you cook them, you can't, it's almost like I had to figure out, oh, where's the bone? Like I couldn't figure <laughs> out where the bone was because it was, you know, because they cut them right, the, the bone with the edge of the meat. But once you cook them, it shrinks up and the bone comes out and then you can see the bone. But um, I took them out, well, I let them thaw first and then I pulled them out the night before and put them on a, a rack and I salted them and then put them back in the refrigerator and let them sit overnight. And then the next morning I pulled them out and I, I sprinkled that, I have a, um, that Redmond real salt, uh, garlic and pepper blend. Mm -hmm. I, I made a, I take that and I add, uh, some smoked paprika and some chili powder to it. So that was my, that I sprinkled that around like all the sides for the rub. And that's basically it. Oh no, I know. I almost forgot. Cause I watch before I cook something like this, I always watch a bunch of different videos to see how many different ways people make these things. Right. And the the guy, what's his name? Aaron Franklin, my favorite guy from Texas, he he just sprinkled a little bit of um like hot sauce on the surface and and, and smeared it on there before he sprinkled the rub. So I salted it, let it salt overnight or sit overnight, and then I took the it was Louisiana hot sauce, and I just put some on each one, and you know, rubbed it in or rubbed it around, and then I sprinkled that that rub that I made on it. So that that was it, and then I I stuck it on the um, smoker around oh, what time was it? 10, 10 a.m. Um, At two twenty five. Or well, you... some of those, like actually the Aaron Franklin guy did his at 275, but his were uh, attached. It was like a little rack of them. And I, and they, they take longer when they're attached like that. Right. But since mine were separate. I didn't want to like, and I had somewhere to go. I had to leave them there and go somewhere. So I didn't want to um, have it too high and have them overcooked. So I put it, I was going to do it at 250, but I, just cranked it up to 265 and then I got back and checked them so I think it was at a, that five hour mark I, I sprayed them with some apple cider vinegar and water mixture and um, and stuck the temporary thermometer in just to feel what they felt like and they were getting there but they weren't quite there so I left them on another two hours I think it turned out so seven hours all together yeah, it was like an, at least another hour, and maybe I wrapped them and left them on there another hour after I wrapped them. But I wrapped them in butcher paper because um, I went back to spray them again an hour later, and it was like, oh, these things are done. <laughs> it was just like that thing just went just right through it. And, and the temperature was a little over around 200 on each, each one, like 203 and 200. And so it was like they were ready. So I pulled them out. And I wrapped them and threw them back in there while I came up and, and uh, made my my eggs and bacon that that was going to go with it. <laughs> that sounds delicious. So when you when you wrap them, you just let them. You just did you take the turn the smoker off and just let them sit in the, the smoker just on their no, own. I let, 
I left it on, I think I took it down to 250 and then just left them on there. I came up and, and got, I hard boiled a couple eggs, made some bacon to chop up in, in the, with, you know, I chopped up the eggs. That was going to be my, my side dish. And, uh, when I, I think I did the bacon first and then when the eggs were almost done, I ran down and grabbed it off the, the smoker and brought it up and I let it sit. So I let the, I let the thing rest at, off the heat for a half hour. And well, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to Costco tomorrow. I'm going to get some short ribs. Have you ever done this? Is that where you buy your, you, you ever get your, I know you said you got them from your, your farm Wagyu, but do you, have you got short ribs at Costco? No, they had them, but I think there's, I can't remember. They may slice them the other way. I forget what that's called. There's a Korean. Is that Korean? Is maybe. That Korean? Yeah. Um, I think, but I'm not sure. I think that because I, I kind of picked them up. They were to yeah. They weren't separate like that. They were to, in, a, in a chunk. But I can't remember right. which way that it was facing. But yeah, Costco does have them. So yeah, yeah, the Costco meat's good too. But the the other thing I was gonna say was uh. I made six, so I thought, well, I'll, I'll eat three for each meal. Like I'll eat them for two meals, because you figure. Out, but those things are so big. I got through two and a half, and I had to. I got to that halfway point on that third one, and I'm like, you know, I could probably shove this in and stuff, <laughs> but I'm really gonna regret it. So I actually put that little piece of meat in with the the other ones and put it back in the refrigerator, and. Seven hours later, I felt like I had just eaten. I was still stuffed. I couldn't believe how. <laughs> and I was almost thinking about not eating today because I, when I got up this morning, I was still like, just like. Felt like I had a brick in your stomach, huh? Yeah, I was like, I don't even know if I want to eat today. But, you know, by mid-afternoon, I was starting to get hungry again. So, I. Now, do you, do you like short ribs better than. than uh, like spare uh, ribs? Yes. I do. Yeah, there's some about short ribs. They're just so plump and juicy, <laughs> especially these. I'm, I should have taken a before picture because the the uh, the marbling was beautiful on these things. Uh, it was like when I pulled them out of those packages before I salted them. I was I was like, wow, like I couldn't believe the the, the marbling in these. Wow, it, it really came through when you sliced into them at the end. I mean, there's so much juice you almost gagged on it when you take a bite. <laughs> now, do you say you say you save the bones from the short ribs and use that for for anything? Uh oh. Where is that? I got everything handy right here in my freezer. Ah, there you go. Bones for, for bone me. broth. And bone those, for those, bone broth. So those are my spare man, rib bones right there. Man, that's some big bones. Yeah, big flat ones, if you can see. Uh, the bag's kind of fogged up. I, I can pull one out if it's frozen. Wow. But these make good... I uh, can't get in the lens. That's a good picture. Now it's a good picture. I can see it. Yeah, they make good bone broth bones, those, those uh, short ribs. Wow. Well... I know what I'm. I know what my next project is. I'm doing the short ribs. I'm going to do your coffee. I'm doing the coffee espresso ice cream and short ribs this in the next few days. So yeah, wow. All I still right, have, I still have ice cream in there. I've been resisting. Wow, that really you 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 that's for the same batch that you made last week. Yeah, wow. doing you're doing good. That that's really good control. Well, the fact that it's like hard as a brick <laughs> too. It's like I don't feel like dealing with it because, you know, I have to break off chunks and then put it in a bowl and let it sit there and sort of soften up before I can even eat it. So half the time I'm eating it before it's time and chewing on. It's not as pleasant. The soft when when you first make it. That's well, the, the pit, your picture. I remember your picture. It looked so like soft, sort of like really soft served ice cream. And when it first comes out of that bowl, it's like that. That's that's when it's the best when you first first make it like that. Well, I'm looking forward to, to doing it. I'll, I'll report back and let everybody know how that project comes out. But I, I looked up how, I, I, I'm trying to figure out how to get it to stay soft. And um, one of the recommendations, which I can't do, is to add alcohol to it. 
it'll keep it from freezing up completely. It'll keep it semi soft. And, and then also whatever container you can store that container inside of a either well they said either a ziploc or or a, like a paper bag in your refrigerator right to it. But, uh, i wonder i wonder if you can buy you know what i'm gonna try just uh the yogurt the the, the yogurt containers that that comes with I, i'm gonna try to store it just in a yogurt container and and see how that like a cardboard well the, i got plastic ones the plastic ones um it's the ones we use but i don't know how that well, i'll find out i mean i may i may have the same issue you have but and, and yeah right now it. right now i have it in a plastic uh whatever those things a plastic with a, a, a tupperware container yeah, yeah one of them, something like that but i i tried doing it in, in serving sizes at one point i had them in littler ones but then it was so hard i'd go try to get it out of there and end up cracking the, the plastic because the plastic was frozen too. And I just end up ruining my little containers. <laughs> yeah. I actually just, you just, I just, I just need to order a new container. I keep all my stuff that I have in the morning to make my mud with. And I just noticed this morning there's a container. You put the top on it and it's got a lock on it, the locket. But I just noticed this morning, I wanted to go put the lock on it that the, the plastic, the container itself was cracked on both sides. And so I'm, I'm going to have to, you just triggered that memory to have to order a, a new container to put my uh, inulin in. So, well, what, what do you want? It's, it's that time again. What do you, what, uh, how do you want to close this out, Brian? What's on your heart? What do you want to share with the people? Ah, uh, God, that's a good question. Um, well, of course, you know, keep eating your meat, but, uh, you know, if you're having any food reactions, it's like I, I had that reaction with the meat the other night, but then, then I realized I took a couple spoonfuls of yogurt too at the end of my meal, which could have been the whole problem. So yeah, my, the only little, my little thought for the day is to, uh, if, if you think you're having a problem with a certain thing, try to cut, cut it out for, for a good two weeks to a month and see if it improves whatever the problem is like i need to stop dairy for for a little bit just to see if this whole feeling stuffed all the way up to bedtime <laughs> and then having that heartburn and acid reflux in the middle of the night i've been having that too so yeah i think it's a great lesson for everybody we, we all need to no matter what it is you know you know replay it in your mind and try to isolate what you think it may or eliminate for a while until you actually find out what may be the, the culprit, maybe the cause of, of you having whatever that may be in your life going on. So, yeah. And I'm hoping it's not eggs. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. You can't, you can't live without eggs. I mean, there's certain things, eggs and bacon, those two things, <laughs> yeah. you just, you're not going to be able to live without, well, you could, if you really had to, but you don't want to have to, to make those extreme measures. Well, tonight I actually, uh, you know, I had leftover uh, sh the short ribs, the ones that were left over. I didn't even eat anything with them. I just ate those. That's that's it. So no side dishes tonight. Just to there see you go. If, that's, if I can sleep better. <laughs> well, well, hopefully you will, and we will see everybody tonight. Kicks takes the stage around eight o'clock, seven thirty, eight o'clock, and uh, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> and then we, <laughs> as long as you know, as long as you show up there. Uh, and, and, and other people show up in time to, to see the show looking for a fun fun night and we just take appreciate you guys for taking your friday nights and and joining with sitting with us for a while help us before you do we never say this and, and someone told me the other day you need to say this just give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you like it don't like it it just really helps us um and then and share it on your facebook or what other platform you have and just uh you know people are looking at honest real discussion uh from two uh from two people who just shares their life of eating keto carnivore just share it with them they they may gain something out of it or they may not uh but the cool thing is you shared something with the right heart so anyway we'll see you guys next week have a great one stay out of the hospital and stay safe yeah good night everybody 